This is Twit. I was fascinated to see an interview over on The Verge from Neelay Patel and Eric Yuan, who is the CEO of Zoom. A lot of stuff in here, but the thing that I think grabbed everybody's attention was this idea of digital twins. Uh, Yuan says that like in the future, maybe five, six years from now, instead of going to all your meetings yourself, you'll be able to send your digital AI powered avatar instead. So if you ever felt like, hey, I've just got way too many meetings to go to and I don't want to go to them all. Instead, you could send your little AI avatar. It would be able to make decisions and like listen to all the input, um, you know, as if it were you. I found this fascinating and, and Neil Patel did as well. I think he really drilled down deep with you on here about what this would entail, what kind of technologies need to be developed in order to us get us to this point and what some of the challenges might be with this. Um, I don't know about you. I mean, I do a lot of podcasts. I don't do a lot of meetings. I don't like meetings. And my, my first thought upon reading this was, you know, if people talking about like, well, you've got too many meetings, so you need to send your digital avatar instead. My thought was, what if we just had less meetings? Is that is that maybe better solution than having to create an entirely new technology so that we can have more meetings? Yeah, my thought was also um, just send it in an email. Like, I don't <laughs> I'm not exactly <laughs> sure what there is to benefit from sending your digital avatar, which then will recap to you what happened. Um, why not just just send information via text if that's how you're going to receive it anyway. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It, it's, I, this is something I never would have crossed my mind. Um, but it did remind me of, um, something that my colleague Jesse did a couple years ago where he was also like, Oh, I have too many meetings and I don't necessarily feel like I contribute that much to most of them. And so why don't I just pre-record some messages and, um, just have them play, you know, automatically. Um, and so he did that and he just had these, like this loop recording of him just, you know, looking like, you know, looking at the camera and looking like he was engaging. Um, so this is, this kind of feels like the next iteration of that. And, uh, I had to let Jesse know, I was like, I have a million people sent you this article yet. Um, but I don't know, it just, I, it, I don't know what, purpose this has it feels yeah. oddly dystopian i don't know if i want to be on a zoom call with ai twins um of people and um again email i promise that's yeah like a right. direct easy way to do this yeah, yeah. <laughs> i i found this so strange i mean in part i feel like i mean i'm a science fiction author as well i feel like he's horning in on my territory here like leave the dystopian <laughs> stuff to us come on um but i thought what was really you know, my first thought again was this idea of like, if you had all these people, everybody in a meeting sending their digital avatars because nobody wanted to be in the meeting, then like, isn't there a yeah. conclusion that maybe that meeting did not need to happen? And maybe yeah. that's an end result of this. Like all the yeah. AIs are off having their meetings by themselves and we all go and live our lives. I don't know. It felt increasingly strange the more I read his things like, oh, you could just go to the beach. It's like, well, that sounds great. I mean, I'd love to go to the beach, but then why am I have, why am I in this job in the first place? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's the question that I had was if it's just a bunch of these avatars or these digital twins in this meeting, who is leading? Like, what, you know what I mean? Like at mm -hmm. what point is yeah. there a human that is initiating the conversations? Like who gets to choose like, oh, I'm going to send my AI, but you physically right. need to be there because you need to lead the conversation and my AI will respond accordingly. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm sure these are all things that he's thinking of, but it's, it's fascinating to think of the ways that people are incorporating or trying to incorporate AI into like all these things where you're like, I don't know, do we need it? Not sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a great point you raised there about sort of a digital divide, which is it's not going to be the people who are kind of harried in the lower level, you know, employees or middle managers probably who are going to be using this as much as sort of the high level executives who are like a CEO of Zoom who has dozens of meetings on his calendar every day and is probably tired of going to meetings, which I totally get. But I don't know. It does, you know, I hear from a lot of my friends who work at larger corporations and have a lot of these meetings every day that especially post, um, you know, COVID in an era where in the COVID like sort of height of the pandemic, everybody was going to Zoom and people all had the Zoom fatigue. You know, yes. I can see why this appeals, but I, I, I totally agree with you. I don't really understand what sort of the end result of it is. What is the end game there in terms of is everybody sending their AI twins to meetings? Uh, is are some people allowed to do it and some people aren't allowed to do it? What are you doing with the rest of your time? I mean, it feels like it's one of those those memes almost where it's like, oh, 
oh, he's almost got it. He's almost realized that maybe we have too many meetings. But instead, his answer is, let's throw AI at the problem. Yeah, no, absolutely. And also, like, is there like there's all the logistics, like, is there a disclaimer that, you know, like if it ends mm -hmm. up being looking incredibly lifelike or sounding incredibly lifelike, it's like, am I talking to you or am I talking to your mm -hmm. AI twin? Um, yeah, no, I don't know. I think it and, you know, he's obviously proposing this as something where you can spend more time on either tasks that matter with your family or, as you mentioned, just like chilling, you know, go chilling out wherever you want to go. Um, but it it also begs the question of like it feels like a slippery slope too, where we have a lot of these conversations about AI and what it'll replace and how effective or necessary that is. And if we're talking about AI in the workplace, if you have this um, AI avatar that joins Zoom calls for you, what else will it do um, mm -hmm. that then renders you unnecessary? And so that's, I think, um, something that I, I don't know if these CEOs are thinking about, but I know it's something that those of us who really want our jobs and want to hang on to our jobs are going to be thinking about and raising questions about. Um, sure. So I just wonder how far something like this would end up going. Yeah. I, uh, one of the things I thought was really interesting was he even at one point suggests essentially the idea of personalized large language models. So rather than all of us using chat GPT and it's kind of the same chat GPT for everybody, there would be, you know, a Dan large language model and an a Brar large language model. You have your own, you know, AI that's built off you. And yeah. he even alludes to the idea that at some point this could make decisions for you based on you know, knowing you, which I also find fascinating as somebody who is the CEO of a publicly traded company is like, does that like if you, if your digital twin makes a policy decision or some sort of business decision that then ends up, say, costing your company millions of dollars or yeah. really affecting safety or security or something, can you blame it on your AI? Oh, that was my AI avatar. It made that decision. It wasn't really me. Is that or or do you still get fired? I don't know. I I think the implications of that are wild. Yeah. No, that's a really great question. Just to paint a picture of how kind of cautious I am with literally even the most basic AI. Like I was talking this week about how even when I do interviews, um, Otter AI is really great for transcribing, but I tend to actually like to listen to my inter the interviews I do myself to not only be able to come through them, but to make sure that they're like really accurate. I'm, there's no typos mm -hmm. or misunderstanding. And so to take that like times a hundred and say, well, this AI yeah. avatar is now me and it's going to make decisions and it's going to speak on my behalf and it's going to be another, like my twin. I don't know if I have the trust to ever do that or to ever allow that which is just yeah next level right yeah i mean it, it's essentially it's your face it's your voice potentially like all these things like at what point does it become indistinguishable from you this is a, a another issue patel raises is like security and privacy issues as well right like if somebody a bad actor or malware or something like that gets into your computer and it yeah take over your digital twin? Can it start like injecting it with other information and start making different decisions? I think that's really kind of a fascinating sort of idea. I mean, the, the sort of poisoning the well, right? I mean, we already know AI has plenty of problems with inventing things that don't exist. I mean, the hallucination issue is a serious problem. And so the idea that maybe somebody could turn that to their own ends, I think adds a whole new dimension to what the implications of this could be. I'm, I'm now full on in like science fiction novelist headspace <laughs> trying to figure out Listen, how this could go. these ideas down. These, this is good fodder for your next The thing. AI will write it down for me. It's good. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other piece of it is in this interview when um, he talks about um, catering this avatar to be better at whatever it is you're not as good at mm. in real life. So being a, a better salesperson, for example, he mentions, um, that's just really interesting because I, I, I don't mean to get all like weird and sappy about it, but like we're all unique and individual and we have our strengths and our weaknesses and it's what makes us human. But if you just had this capability to be like, I can make this avatar whatever I want it to be. And then you just lose that, you completely lose that sense of humanity of like, well, if it can be anything, then like what purpose am I as a human being serving in this company or organization if my AI is better at negotiations than I am? Um, and so that kind of seems like a very odd thing to think about too. Yeah, I, I feel like that even starts to verge into the personal realm as well. I mean, if you start sending, one can imagine a world where you send your digital AI on a 
video date or something like that where it's like oh uh it's more be more charming turn that charming yeah. dial way up or something like that or it's or it's like making you know sending tinder messages for you or something like that that yeah. would be super weird right like i just i i don't know this is one of the things that worries me the most about ai as with any technology is you can't uninvent it right once it's out there it's out there and people will start finding more and more ways to apply it and there comes a point where you feel i feel like especially now that we've seen the proliferation of deep fake technology and other things like that where it's just like can we ever rein that back in or are we at a stage now where it's like you can never trust your eyes and your ears anymore at all yeah absolutely actually your your tinder comment uh reminded me that i like i feel like i've been living under a rock but people really apparently do use uh generative ai to create these messages uh on on dating platforms which oh, no. you know okay you take that and then you apply it to anything else whether it's work environment or whatever it is what are what are you as a human saying and what how much of this is just generated um and so uh you know i guess the good news is this sounds like it's off into the future and it'll take some time to develop but i feel like we're already the building blocks are already here right and um yeah and I just don't think anyone's going to be pumping the brakes anytime soon. So I'm like, is this an, an inevitable thing um, or will some miracle happen? And we say, hey, let's take a minute to just think about this for a second. <laughs> yeah, I'd certainly like to think that was the case. I, I reading through this, you know, was struck by sort of just the very gung ho nature of this entire conversation from from Yuan's perspective, where he's like, this is a thing that I really want to really happen. And here's the, the steps we need to take to get there. And, and even admitting that it was a few years off was not necessarily, to my mind, spending as much time in consideration of what the end result of the consequences of this might be. And it, it does worry me a little bit, especially in the realm of AI, as we saw previously when sort of blockchain and and NFT and Bitcoin, cryptocurrency were all really big. Like people just plowed straight a, straight ahead into that, you know, no, no guardrails at all. And we've seen some of the consequences of that with like the fall of the cryptocurrency exchanges and all of the, what that leads to. And to me, as somebody, if you're somebody in charge of making these decisions and you're someone in charge of developing technology and deciding the priorities of a multi-million or billion dollar company, it is your responsibility to spend the time thinking about what the end consequences of this might be. And it seems like maybe Eric Yuan's just sort of offshored that to his AI avatar instead of worrying about himself. I know. <laughs> That's so true. Maybe the maybe that avatar needs to join a meeting and clear this all up, uh, or just join this this chat with us and and let us know what uh, <laughs> what's going on. It's, there. It turned up that hosting dial, and it just got <laughs> yeah. it got way better than us. And we don't even need to be here anymore. <laughs> and we'll just hop off, and we'll just let it take over. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, and I think that I mean even a more like recent example of um having to pump the brakes on something that rolled out AI related as Google's like AI overviews that were like mm -hmm. telling you to um eat rocks and put glue yep. in your pizza um so even things that are that simple where it's just your search results um those are things that um you know maybe a lot of these companies it's just take a minute like that we're in this this mad dash in this race to for all these companies to compete with each other and roll out the biggest baddest version of ai but um but maybe maybe let's just take a minute to breathe and uh just think about things a bit more <laughs> I think that is a, that's a great message, one that we should be sharing with more people. Thanks so much for watching this little chunk of Tech News Weekly. If you'd like to get the full episode, well, head over to twit.tv slash TNW. There you'll find buttons you can click or tap to subscribe to the entire show in audio and video formats. Or just look in the description. We've got links down there as well.